What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be doing a buyer's guide to a PC-based system, also known as Hyperspin or Launchbox. We're gonna talk about the advantages and disadvantages to a PC-based system. All right, guys, like I always say in my other videos, be sure to follow me on all socials at Vic underscore VP. I post a lot to TikTok and Instagram. Instagram stories is where usually when I'm actually working on build, I'll post to the stories and you could see live up to date stuff. And you could also message me and I could send you videos and pictures and answer all questions much faster on Instagram. Now, some people, my regular subscribers, might be looking at this video and be like, what is, why is Vic doing this? This video is really going out to my either you're looking for a build or customer of mine that is inquiring about an arcade cabinet. Um, this is the final kind of option that you could do, which is a PC based system. If you go back on my videos, I have two other system options. Like I do when you message me and inquire about an arcade cabinet, there's a beginner kind of easy setup mode, which is a Pandora's box intermediate middle level, which is a raspberry Pi. And now this, this is considered expert level PC based system. In this video, we're gonna go through a lot of things. We're gonna talk about like the advantages and the disadvantages and just stuff to keep in mind and understand what a PC based arcade system can do. So there's a lot to discuss in any type of arcade system setup and I'm gonna to try to be consistent and consecutive with this. Uh, basically, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and the cons uh, we're gonna go through like what this system can do compared to the lower cost, lower type of system options and such. I'm gonna go through like what I personally ask you as a customer and how the email process goes. We're gonna actually look at the system itself. Usually I do a screen capture, but on this video, cause this is a customer's PC build, um, I'll just be putting it on the tripod and you can actually physically see what the PC can do in an arcade setup. Um, keep in mind this again, I label this as an expert kind of tier setup. Um, you know, it is a PC based system. So keep in mind, this is the most expensive option you could do, but PC builds have way a ton, a ton of advantages compared to the other options such as the Pandora's box or the Raspberry Pi. So off the bat, usually when customers message me on whether it's on an email or on the Facebook marketplace ads. They hit me with, hey Vic, what is the cheapest option you could do? And now you're kind of, you're just asking me for a cheap option. I kind of hit you back with saying, hey, what games are you looking to play specifically? Because the cheaper options might not be able to play the games that you want. Again, when you do message me, I'll, I'll do it in this video, I'll kind of tell you how my experience with people message me. There's a lot of questions that get, I ask, you answer, and then I could determine which setup is good for you. So since I mentioned pricing, we might as well start with pricing because honestly that's the number one question is how much is a, is a system? PC based systems are the most expensive option that anyone would offer me personally, but it's also the most versatile option that you could do. This right here that you're looking at right here is a five figure machine. You can just tell by the size of it, the add-ons such as the active marquee, the joysticks, other add-ons which you don't see right now but I will break them out such as light guns, guitar hero, guitars, DJ hero controller, dance dance revolution dance pads and wireless controllers such as like Xbox One controllers or Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis controllers. So depending on the build that you want, obviously it will reflect on the pricing. It's also great that I'm making this video with this specific cabinet because number one, this is the most expensive cabinet I've ever done, but it also has all of the add-ons that are possible for a PC-based system. So now let's talk about this specific build right here. This is known as Project Canada. This is running a 40 terabyte hyperspin build inside of a Bivik 55 inch four player arcade cabinet. This right here to date is probably the most insane build. It has everything that you could pro possibly add to in an arcade cabinet. So it's a great example to make this video as a customer. You can kind of see what the possibilities are when it comes to a PC based system. 
Now, as far as details, this is running a 40 terabyte PC. It's an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M.2 SSD drive for the boot and the hyperspin files, along with 46 terabytes on hard disk drives. Also, as far as graphics card, this is running a 3060 Ti. This kind of detail, you might not understand it, but as far as the technical world, this is current gen PC tech. There are other builders and people that will use cheaper tech known as Dell Optiplexes or HPs um, that are refurbished eight to nine year old devices. Yes, they are cheaper. Yes, I could do that, but you are sacrificing a lot when you go with that. So just keep in mind that the computer in this, honestly, the PC alone in this is about $1,500 to about $1,700. That's the PC alone, not really including like the hard drives to make up 46 terabytes. So there is a lot that goes on. Again, if you are looking for pricing, I already told you what the price of the computer alone is, not including the hard drives. Now, on this build, like I said, he's got everything. I mean, we have LED blinky. I'm gonna go through everything inside of the video, but he's got LED blinky. He's got servo joysticks where the actual gate will switch from four-way to eight-way. He has a trackball. He's got a sound system on it. As far as add-ons that PC builds could do, it does a lot such as controllers. You could add four. Xbox One controllers. This customer has six 8-bit wireless controllers, basically a Genesis controller. He even has two Super Nintendo controllers because he wanted to play Super Nintendo with a Super Nintendo controller. He wanted to play the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. He wanted to play that with an NES-style controller. You could do that with Xbox controllers, but this customer specifically wanted separate controllers for those specific systems. This also does have two light guns. He does have the most expensive light gun you could get, which is the Joke Gun for IR. He has two of these along with two foot pedals, running Gun for IR technology, the most accurate light gun tech that there is. You'll see videos on Rambo. I'll explain to you what the price is of just the gun to be modded alone. But yes, this does have two light guns on it. On this build also, he does have two Guitar Hero Wii guitars for games like Guitar Hero, Clone Hero, and Rock Band. The last add-on that I don't have but he has because he's in Canada, he does have one DJ Hero controller and two Dance Dance Revolution dance pads. Again, this right here virtually has everything that could possibly be done inside of a PC-based system. Now that we know what this system has as far as all the add-ons, I'm going to hit you with the first thing with the advantage to a PC build. PC builds could do all of this. As you can see with the wireless Xbox One controllers, it could do guitar here if you want a guitar, and it could do light guns. Some people might argue with me that you could do light guns with a Raspberry Pi. Me personally, I'm, I'm not for it. I will show you the light gun build in this. Yes, Raspberry Pi could do light guns, but not all of the light gun games, such as PC games, Wii games, the PS2, Light gun games, graphically, a Raspberry Pi cannot handle it. So if you are looking for a light gun build, I will automatically tell you that you do need a PC-based system. Now let's understand this system specifically. This is running 40 terabytes worth of games. Um, 40 terabytes, if you don't know terabyte count, that's a lot, it's a lot of data. And on my personal build, I do have 97 systems. Big thing is that my systems are no BS, no filler systems. There are other sellers out there that will sell you 12 terabyte drives with 100,000 games on it. Meanwhile, a good big chunk, like 80,000 games, you're not really gonna know what that system was or what the game is. For example, like there's a Casio X100 or the Texas Instruments TI-83. Who wants to play that? Nobody wants to play that. So my list right here is a no banger, no filler setup. You can see my Hyperspin 2022 video. Again, I'm 32. These are systems that I personally know the name of visually. I've seen games of it. Again, no BS, no filler. I'm right now at 40 to 42 terabytes worth of data. And again, 96 to 98 systems. Now this will play almost everything. I mean, we're talking the Switch. We're talking PS2, PS3, the 360, the PSP, even PC games. So. Right now, PC games is big. Uh, you got PS5 right now, you got the Xbox One, and you got PC games. Honestly, Xbox games, Xbox One games are, majority of them, 
are on the PC. So technically, yes, you could play current games on this. It's just, it has to be the PC version. PS5, PS4 games, for example, is not emulated. That is a big fraud unless how far into the future this video goes out. Um, that's not emulated. For example, there are people that are advertising God of War. I have God of War. That is because it converted into a PC game. So yes, I do have the new God of War game. No, it is not a PS4 emulator. It is just a port of a PC game. Now, aside from all that, this also plays your Steam, Epic Games, and Battle.net. So if you're looking at Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, yes, a PC-based system will run it. No, it won't work with arcade controls. You will be able to use your keyboard and mouse or you could use your Xbox controller. But again, essentially this right here could play virtually everything, almost everything I'm gonna say. So now if you take a look back at my videos, I do have something called the Ultimate Console, which is a PC tower running 40 terabytes. You don't need an arcade cabinet for an Ultimate Console. I actually designed that so that you could kind of just plug it into a living room TV and game you get all of this and you do not need the arcade panel control you don't need this arcade cabinet it could just be a standalone pc with four xbox one controllers and add-ons like i said before if you want a guitar your guitars you could add that on to an ultimate console essentially there is an ultimate console in here that pc that's on my ultimate console that's inside of this then it's just kind of connected out to all the USB devices and the HDMI devices. But essentially, this is running an ultimate console. So now if you do message me and you know you're looking for a build, you know the first question I usually ask you is, what games are you looking to play? That is the biggest thing because once you find out and figure out what games you want to play, it will determine what system you need. For example, right now the biggest game because of A1UP, NFL Blitz. So in my mind, if you're looking for the arcade version of NFL Blitz, it is a PC build that must be done. If you've seen on my Pandora's box builds, they do have NFL Blitz. However, that is the N64 version. If you are really looking for the NFL Blitz arcade four player version, you need a PC build. Somebody in the comments is gonna say I could do it on a Pi. I'm not dealing with that, no. You could do it on a Pi, it'll run slow. I don't care what you say, it'll run slow. You now as a customer will tell me, hey Vic, I want it Blitz, but it plays choppy, it plays crappy. For that type of game, you do need a PC build. Another very popular game that people always ask me, I need Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yes, the Pandora's Box has that, and I did a video on it. It's very choppy, not to mention it is the Sega Dreamcast version with graphic issues. A PC build will run Marvel vs. Capcom 2 arcade version flawlessly. So again, I get people that message me and they go, hey Vic, I want every game. I want all the games. Okay, that automatically tells them that you want a 40 terabyte system. I hit you with the price and you go, uh, never mind, I don't want all the games. So I try not to tell you to use that word all. Again, you gotta let me know your main kind of system that you want. Hey Vic, I want Grand Theft Auto. I want like the PS2. You need a PC build. Hey Vic, I just need like q -Bird and Street Fighter and Metal Slug. That's fine, you could do that with a Pandora's box build, you could do that with a Raspberry Pi, you could do it with a cheaper level tiered system. Again, that is the biggest, the biggest question for you is you gotta let me know what games you wanna play. I do get people that say, hey Vic, right now I wanna play Metal Slug, but next month I might wanna play Grand Theft Auto. If you want something future proof, it is a PC build that you will need. The PC builds could always be updated, not to mention again, PC games, they keep coming out daily, you could run PC games on a PC build. Now, in the end of the video, we'll do actual gameplay. I'll launch and I'll show you how the system works because that is part of another ordeal when it comes to PC builds or any system. People do want to know the user functionality, how easy is it and all that. We're going to go into that next. But I will do gameplay. For example, we'll run NFL Blitz. I'll run Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on this system. But again, once the best thing I do tell people is that you do want to kind of sit down and make a list. You got kids. Ask them, make a list of what games they want to play, and then you kind of bring it to me, and then I will let you know what system could run it. Now, let's talk about another big concern. These systems, these tiers, again, I, in the beginning of the video, I said it's tiers. Your beginner level tier is Pandora's Box. Your intermediate middle level is a Raspberry Pi, and then your expert level is a PC-based system. Beginner, intermediate, expert. I labeled it like that really in regards to the user interface and how easy it is to navigate. 
let alone what games you want. Pandora's boxes are very easy. If you are the type of person, which I get a lot of, that people want Airbnb builds, that they just want a cabinet with an Airbnb and they want their guests to enjoy, it's Pandora's box all day. That's the easiest thing that somebody could just walk up to. They could pick a game, they could start it, they could exit it. They really can't break it. Um, you know, all you gotta do is unplug it. That's it. Raspberry Pi is a little bit more advanced because you do have kind of a wheel setup like Hyperspin here where you have to pick a system and then in that system you pick the game. So it's not very user friendly. If you're looking for an Airbnb setup or a restaurant setup, Raspberry Pis and PC builds are not what you want. Again, you want to run your business. You don't want to think of this. It should just be a simple plug and play setup. Pandora's box is the easiest thing. No, you can't get light guns with a Pandora's box. No, you're not gonna get a four player coin operated with the Pandora's box. I made a video on that. You're not gonna get that. Again, depending on your situation, I always suggest for easy beginner level that anyone, even a five year old can walk up to it and play it, Pandora's box is what you want. Raspberry Pis and PC builds now it gets a little bit, it gets, it gets, I don't wanna say the word complicated, but it gets more intense. Uh, Raspberry Pi, you plug the system in, you have to wait for it. And again, the big thing that I get from customers is, hey Vic, I just wanna play Pac-Man. Okay, you have to go into the main arcade wheel and then you have to pick Pac-Man. So it's kind of like a two-step thing. It's the same thing with Hyperspin PC-based systems. If I right now wanted to play NES, but I'm right now inside of an arcade shoot 'em up menu, Vic, I don't know where it went, I can't find NES, that's because you're in the wrong wheel and stuff. So it does, it gets more intense. Definitely, I do tell customers, even with a Raspberry Pi build, it's not something that you're going to be able to simply just pick up and go. It is not a Pandora's box. There will be some learning to this. You will have to get used to it. Now, I'm not saying in a bad way. It's not going to take you a year to learn it. It might take you a couple hours to totally understand how things work. Raspberry Pis are a little bit easier. The only thing that's with Pis is that it's very delicate. You have to shut down the system appropriately. Same thing with a PC-based system. You can't just go here and unplug the cord like an arcade cabinet such as a Pandora's box. These are more sensitive. You know, you don't want to just unplug the PC and lose the power. You could kind of mess up the boot and the Windows stuff and all that. So just keep that in mind again. If we're looking for something super easy, Pandora's box. I, Vic, I got this is going to elderly. A, a five-year-old's going to use it. It's a Pandora's box all day. But again, Pandora's boxes cannot play Guitar Hero. It can't do the light guns. It can't do... Um, oh, the Wii, it can't play PC games, it, you're limited to that. So now again, I have this Hyperspin PC build labeled as expert because it does take some getting used to as far as navigation, not to mention it does challenge you meaning patience. If you are the type of person that is just impatient, for example right now we're going to go into MAME and I'm going to launch Donkey Kong. It takes a couple of seconds, it's going to do its thing to load up. I literally went to people's houses with little kids and they're impatient and they start wailing on buttons and Vic, I don't know what happened. You need patience for this. Again, if I were picking a game and I'm just wailing on buttons, you do have the risk of something popping up and now the computer is frozen and now you're upset. Keep that in mind. Again, there is a reason why it's labeled expert. You do need the patience for it. I'm not saying you need to know computers, but you do need to know some basic computer stuff in case any errors pop up and all that. The only time I've ever seen errors is that when somebody is impatient and is just wailing on the buttons because the screen isn't moving, that's where it hits the fan. So just keep that in mind again. There is a reason why it's an expert level system and such. So now in the emulation world, there's a front end. This is known as Hyperspin. There are other people that use LaunchBox or BigBox. I have my personal preference. I am always a hyperspin person. To me, it's a visually pleasing system. Yes, LaunchBox also could be pleasing, but I know the ins and outs of hyperspin. People might think and say, that's not that they think, they will say hyperspin is dated. My setup works, so I won't really be ever kind of changing over from hyperspin. I like hyperspin, it does what I need it to do, and it works for all of my main systems. Everything works and launched, so I don't have to worry about anything like that. Keep in mind, PC systems in this emulation world, there's your front end, we have the emulators, and then we have the ROMs. 
So big thing, another reason why it's called expert level is that there's so much stuff going on in the back end that you don't see. You just have to keep in mind that there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. I'm right now launching inside of a front end. I right now have to pick a game. When I pick this game, it's gonna launch an emulator. The emulator is gonna load the ROM. There's a lot of stuff. Then not to mention that when you exit the game, it's gotta bring you back to the hyperspin. A lot of stuff gets involved. That's why I label it as expert. Whereas a Pandora's box, honestly, it's the same theory, but it's kind of easier. Pick a game and it launches. It's, it's very seamless, I would say. Again, you, that is what you get, though. That's what you pay for. So now let's talk about like the cabinet options for if you were going to go with a PC-based system. Again, I do have the option for an ultimate console. That is a PC alone, a PC tower by itself with four Xbox controllers. There is no TV. There's no arcade sticks. Nothing to that. Then you have an arcade build such as this. As far as like add-ons arcade wise, you can let me know whatever button configuration you want. This one specifically has six buttons for players one and two, and players three and four have four buttons. Normally I suggest eight buttons for players one and two, and six buttons for players three and four. I also have options for dedicated four ways, trackball and cup holder, flight stick, spinner, all that as far as an arcade control panel. This customer didn't want the cup holders and they didn't want the dedicated fours because they have a very cool kind of add-on which is servo sticks. These sticks change from four-way to eight-way. Basically games such as Donkey Kong and Pac-Man you want to be using a four-way stick instead of an eight-way stick. This way it's just smoother gameplay. Another advantage to PC builds is this right here, the second monitor known as the Active Marquee. As you can see, while I'm changing the system, the marquee goes with it. People do have this request. It is an add-on, obviously. You could do this technically with a Raspberry Pi, but I don't offer that for my Pi builds. Uh, I don't know about Android boxes if they do that, but for me, if you are looking for an active marquee, it is gonna be a PC-based system. Basically, when you are playing games, it does show you just like an arcade marquee. It'll show you the logo and you play your game. So it's a very cool add-on for this specific cabinet, the Bivik cabinet, my marquee is here. So if you are looking for an active marquee, you're looking at a PC-based system. And again, that's kind of an advantage with the PC-based system. There's a lot of add-ons. I'm gonna recap the advantages and disadvantages to the whole thing. But as you can see, you do have active marquee with a PC system. Now for this specific build, this customer also has something known as LED Blinky. Really great for MAME Arcade, which is all the arcade games. Uh, Metal Slug, Street Fighter, The Simpsons, arcade games. LED Blinky basically will illuminate the button that is needed for that specific game. As you can see, Centipede is using the trackball and it only has one button, which is the fire button. Street Fighter uses six buttons. It will illuminate the six buttons. Very cool feature, it is obviously an add-on, another advantage to a PC-based system. The only disadvantage to LED Blinky is that it will not work with all 96, 97 systems that I have, and it won't work with each individual game, such as PC games, such as Mortal Kombat 11. It won't light up with that. LED Blinky is great, strictly just for main arcade, and the retro consoles, such as the NES, and the Super NES, and all that. So for visual purposes, I'm going to turn off the lights so you can see another version of LED Blinky working. Alexa, turn off the garage lights. What I'll do is that I'm going to exit out of Centipede and we're going to go into a main arcade game just so you can kind of see visually the lights and such. So we'll launch Double Dragon, why not? So as you can see, LED Blinky now has four buttons lit up for players one and two and... Like you. It'll tell you what each input is. Again, another advantage. LED Blinky, though, will only work really great when it comes to MAME arcades. So as far as arcade panels, I do have an option for dedicated four-way. This cabinet doesn't have it because he has very unique joysticks known as servos. These joysticks right here can convert from eight-way to four-way with this LED Blinky program. I'm going to lift up the deck so you can probably visually see this motor in action. I'm gonna launch a game. It's gonna go through its thing, and you're basically gonna see this motor and this motor switch. Normally I have it as its own standalone joystick known as the dedicated four-way. On this customer's panel, he went extra and did the add-on for servos. And as you can see, that is what LED Blinky also could do. It also does the, so it does the lighting and it also does the joystick. 
And as I exit and pick a different game, it's gonna go back and revert back to eight way. So very cool, awesome stuff. Again, another add on. I could do spinners, I could do flight sticks. We just gotta figure out where on the deck it will go. And remember, I could also do cup holders. So another big kind of popular request when I ask you what games you wanna play, many people want trackball games such as Centipede and Golden Tee, a PC-based system will do that. Some people will say a Raspberry Pi can. I personally have no luck with Raspberry Pis and trackballs, they don't connect, or graphical issues. So if you're looking for a trackball golden tee, I always suggest a PC-based system. Also, you can take a look, this customer specifically wanted bezels. So bezels are with the main arcade games. Very awesome stuff, it looks great. I'm not a golden tee player, but well, you shall rock on and play some golden tea. So again, you could remove the bezels though and go full screen, but just to show you the trackball, awesome trackball, Ultimark LED trackball. You could do a solid white, solid red, or LED. Uh, either way, it's a great, great, it's a great trackball. So you could turn, and as you can see, LED blinky activated, showing you where, you know, what button does what. But that trackball right there is a beautiful trackball. So another big request and add-on that I get a lot of, people do ask about light guns. Vic, I want to play Duck Hunt. Vic, I want to play Time Crisis, The House of the Dead. If you are looking for that, you will need a PC-based system. On all my arcade builds, everything clean as always. I have the flush mount USB connection. And for this specific gun, I do have the female barrel connector. Beautiful stuff. I do have a gun game wheel with over 180 gun games ranging from main arcade, the NES, the Super NES, the Wii, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and PC games. Again, over 180 light gun games. This gun specifically is known as the Jolt. Gun for IR from my buddy at RPEG Electronics, Ray. He modifies these. This is the most expensive gun you could get. This has a very beautiful feature which is known as the Jolt. When you pull the trigger, you get that sliding recoil. That is why this is the most expensive gun out. Ray does modify other guns. He's actually done some Time Crisis 4 and the Operation Ghost. Those will be obviously even more expensive, but you are paying for the luxury of that clack. Again, this is known as the Jolt. I could get a cheaper gun, which is known as the aim track. I have aim tracks, they're good. They are not as accurate as a gun for IR, but they do work, and yes, they are drastically cheaper. Gun for IR also has a middle tier gun option, ranging from about $400 per gun. It will rumble, but it will not give you that slide. If you want the sliding recoil, it's known as a jolt light gun. Also a cool advantage to the Jolt is that this does have an option to plug in a foot pedal and it comes with a foot pedal. It's literally a telephone cord that gets plugged in and I'll do some gameplay with it. If you don't get a Jolt and you do want the foot pedal, you can still get that from Ray at RPEG Electronics. This is a USB option. Awesome stuff. Now this is a main arcade game. Advantage to Gunfire also is that as you can see, I'm about, I don't know, three or four feet away from a 55 inch TV and I am reading. Aim tracks, you have to be much farther, a good maybe six to seven feet away from the camera. I'm gonna move the camera so you can see me. I'll probably do that now actually before we start playing. So I'm gonna just do it very quickly. This is a main arcade game, so I have all the coins and the start mapped to the actual gun itself. I'll bump up the volume a little bit, I don't wanna to be too loud. And again, you could shut off the sliding recoil if you want. You don't need the pedal. This is a game that is amazing with the foot pedal, but as you can see, you don't really need it. I will add the foot pedal in a second. So that's with the recoil. I could turn the recoil off and I could still play. So if you are the type that's gonna play at night, you don't wanna disturb anybody while they're sleeping, you could do that. Also very cool feature, you could pause the game. As you can see, I have the game paused. I will come here and I'll grab my foot pedal. And what's great with this option, it's a very simple plug and play setup, but as you can see, it is a corded option. There's a port on the gun itself, and I could unpause, and now with the foot pedal, I am able to peek over just like how Time Crisis really was, and you need the gun on for that. You need that jolt. So again, 
It is, yes, a luxury. It is more expensive. So just keep that in mind. If you are looking for the Jolt light gun, you are paying for the luxury of that sliding, beautiful recoil. Another big request is people want two light guns. So yes, you could do light guns. As you can see, I have a second Jolt in my hand. And like I said, everything is always clean. I do have the USB connection here and the second female barrel connector for the Jolt. Very popular game is Area 51. And again, another main arcade game. I have the coins mapped to the actual guns itself. So I'm gonna make sure that the gun comes are on, yes. As you can see, I can pull the trigger to start. I'm gonna do just one player for now. This game utilizes the off-screen reload. So I'll reload off-screen. Awesome stuff. Bring it in player two, I'm gonna pull the trigger. And now I'm in. Awesome, awesome stuff. Off-screen reload. And as you can see, I am able to do dual wheeling. I can even hold down. In this game specifically, you can't hold down because it only works per trigger. But games like Terminator, uh, it will recognize just you holding down the trigger. But as you can see, two player light gun with the jolt. That is the luxury of a jolt. Once you're done, you can exit out, you can pull the light guns out, the USBs, and you're good to go to game. So now another very popular add-on ever since I built my House of Rock Partycade, people now are requesting for the Guitar Hero Guitars. Again, another add-on that could only be done with a PC-based system. I also want to do this so you can see live how the system launches. Big thing, I do have my, again, my USB connector, so this is connected via USB, so it is a wired controller. And uh, basically the big thing is that you have to keep in mind that you have to connect these controllers before you start playing the actual game. Uh, think of it as an advantage or a disadvantage. You could play Guitar Hero, it's just there is a couple of steps um, to make sure that it works. I have the controller plugged in now before I pick the game. So I'm gonna go and pick Warriors of Rock. Uh, on my Guitar Hero wheel, I have the Wii and I have the PlayStation 2. So depending on whatever game you pick, it'll launch that one accordingly. Just to show you how it works, as you can see, I press start, takes a little bit of a time to load, but it works. I kind of want to do this live for you to see it. So again, advantage to PC, yes, you have all these add-ons. There's big advantages, it's just, as you can see though, I'm putting like the controller in before the game starts. It's things that you have to learn. Sometimes you might start this game and then go, oh, I forgot to get the controller, and then you plug in the controller. If you do that, it won't work. Then you're gonna contact me and go, hey Vic, it's not working, I don't know what happened. Again, it's just something that you have to kind of go about and learn as you go. I'm not gonna put the music up because I'm definitely not gonna get hit with copyright for this video. But yes, it will launch again for Guitar Hero. I have Guitar Hero, Rock Band, DJ Hero. Um, awesome, it's, it's awesome stuff. Also standing with the DDR. I went into a medium level mode, so Hopefully I could rock this out. But as you can see, using the controller, it works. Not to mention the cord that comes with it is a good like six feet. So I don't have to be right against the arcade machine. It works. Also, same thing, you don't need an arcade cabinet to enjoy this. All you need is the USB connection. So if you do just get an ultimate console, yes, you could add the Guitar Hero guitars. You just gotta keep in mind that you have to have your PC, the tower, a good six feet away because it has to be connected via USB. And there you guys have another advantage to a PC build, Guitar Hero guitars. Cool. Exit out. And now we're on to the next part. So another little advantage, you could kind of do this with the Pi, but for this specific build, this customer did add the six different 8 bit controllers. I've never experienced these controllers until now. It is not an easy process to especially make them all work within the certain specific emulators. Same theory though with this, these have dongles. Just like all the other controllers they have, these have dongles in it. So you have to plug in the dongle, turn on the controller, and then you start the game. It works, they're great. If you want these add-ons, they're cool little features for that specific kind of game. 
Customers, I know for a fact, if you're not used to it or if you have any family over, they might try to play the Wii with this controller and it won't work because I only have these mapped out to certain systems. But definitely the Xbox One controllers will work across. This specific build, the NES, for example, it doesn't work with the Xbox controller because it is mapped out to this controller specifically. Basically what I'm trying to say to you is that you don't need eight controllers the Xbox One controller could work along all of the games. Uh, another advantage I said with the PC is that you could play current gen PC games. And again, I do have it with the Xbox controller. So I have three PC wheels. We have arcade multiplayer style games. I have PC games that must use an Xbox controller slash story based games, such as Grand Theft Auto and God of War. And then I have racing games. Inside of the arcade wheel, I would say out of like the 140 games, a good 70% works with the arcade stick. So fighters such as Street Fighter V, Mortal Kombat 11, Samurai Showdown, Killer Instinct, Injustice 2, these work with the arcade sticks, a great advantage. Games like this though, I highly suggest that you do an eight button layout. This customer wanted six buttons, I suggested eight, he wanted six, you're the customer, I'll do anything you want. But inside of this is also games that can't use the RK6, but they are multiplayer, such as 2K22. Awesome. Also, this is a 4K screen. The computer could play 4K. So I do have these games, for example, set to 4K resolution. So if you have the screen and the PC is compatible for it, you could play in 4K. Anybody using an older style computer, like I mentioned before, like a Dell Optiplex, you might get 4K, but Depending on what graphics card that builder is using, you may or may not get 4K and you'll be at 1080p. But as you can see, yes, you do have PC-based games and you could use the Xbox controllers across all the platforms. So since we're on the subject of PC games, I'll launch, for example, MK11 and I'll show you that it does work with the arcade sticks. There's a lot of configuring that gets done. That is what I do. Um, I am a one-man show here. I'm a one-man army. I make sure that each game launches and I do make sure that each PC game, I should say, works appropriately. When it comes to configuring, even with like NES, Super NES, all the consoles, I personally launch one to five games on each to make sure all the controls work correctly. And again, what better feeling than playing fighters, current gen PC games with arcade sticks. It's a great feeling. You know, you could play with the Xbox controller, but you could play with the arcade sticks and it's just an awesome feeling. So I'll just do some quick gameplay and talk while I'll play because we'll get into like the gameplay aspect of it. But now if I bring in player two, we press the A button and yes, we'll do some Robocop, why not? And we'll do, uh, I don't know, Johnny Cage. Cool. This customer does have a very unique sound setup. He used like some uh, music grade PC monitors. He supplied those. Um, I have usually the Logitech 533 with subwoofer. Uh, the controller though is usually underneath or behind. But as you can see, MK11 in 4K with arcade sticks. Are you serious? Absolutely. Alexa, can you turn off the garage lights? And again, like I said, I'm able to play this with our cases. We go up, left, down, right, just to show you. Awesome. Again, very awesome stuff. Even like Streets of Rage 4, TMNT, the new Shredder's Revenge, it'll work with the arcade sticks. That is just something that you have to really just get down to programming. But as you can see, Mortal Kombat 11 works. PC games is a little bit different than arcade or the consoles where usually you could one button exit. In this game specifically, PC games, you have to actually exit from the main menu to bring back the front end. Uh, last thing I'll show real quick is that we'll use the Xbox controller and I will launch, I'll launch a current game. Uh, I'm a big Grand Theft Auto fan, so we could definitely do some Grand Theft Auto, why not? I got the old Grand Theft Auto 4, everything from 3, Vice City, San Andreas, even the new Definitive Editions. I have it. Grand Theft Auto 4 is a game that like people kind of forgot about. And uh, yes, you could play this. Now, the big thing also that I tell people with this, you know, are you really gonna sit in front of your arcade cabinet and play Grand Theft Auto? 
that's where usually the ultimate console idea comes in. And yes, this customer technically could remove the PC from the cabinet and plug it into his actual TV on his mantle and it will work. So as you can see, I'm able to navigate, I can start the game. I'll probably just fast forward this part so you don't waste time. So after the cutscene, I am now able to play and I'm right now playing Grand Theft Auto 4 in 4K and I can't drive. <laughs> but yes, as you can see, I'm able to play this game. I crashed into the wall, awesome stuff. Let me turn the lights on. Alexa, turn on the garage lights. Okay. So another cool advantage, and this is for me specifically, yes, again, like I said, not many people will play this game in front of their arcade. They might take a stool and play with it, but you know, story-based games like this and God of War, you're really not gonna play it like this. So you do have the option of actually taking out the PC tower and plugging it into a TV and gaming on your couch. That is just me personally. I don't know any other builder that has that option. Yes, you could remove this, put it on your couch and play with it. So another advantage, doesn't have to stay inside of the actual arcade cabinet. This again is an ultimate console inside of an arcade cabinet, dubbing it the ultimate arcade. My personal build, you could take a look at my videos of the Scarface themed cabinet. That is my personal cabinet. That is a build that I majority of the time have the PC outside on my battle station computer desk. And whenever I have family over, if I'm actually doing testing on arcade sticks, I then take the PC and I put it inside of the arcade cabinet and I work with the arcade stick. So it is a versatile system if you think of it like that. It's very awesome and I think I'm the only builder that has that option. Again, this customer right now could turn off everything, take out the PC, put it on his living room floor and play because it is using the Xbox controllers. If he was gonna try to play MAME Arcade, it won't work because they are not mapped out to the Xbox controllers, they are mapped out to the arcade stick. So again, you could get only an ultimate console which is just a PC and game on your couch and MAME Arcade will work with the Xbox controller or in this scenario right here, the games which is mostly the MAME Arcade games will only work with the arcade sticks. So in all honesty, I think I could wrap this video up. We'll do some gameplay now, but I'm gonna just kinda end it with going over a recap. Again, pros and cons to the PC-based system. The PC-based system could basically play almost everything. Almost everything. I mean, there is really not anything it can't, but I do wanna use the term almost, because I don't know, maybe there's one thing that it can't do. But this is the top of the line thing. This will play majority of everything that you are looking for. A lot of advantage, as you can see, control deck wise, trackball, spinner, arcade, you got the guitar, your guitar, you got the light guns, we got the extra controllers. It's honestly just limitless. Other add ons, other advantages, you could do the active marquee on it. We could do the LED blinky on it as well. And also remember, this is a PC, it's a computer. I normally don't advise you to do work on this PC. I'm not looking for you to now you know, install Skype and do video calls and install Zoom and install Word. I don't want you to do that with this. Could you do that? Yes, but I, I advise you not to do that. Um, basically what I'm getting at is that I could essentially exit the front end, which is known as Hyperspin. I could grab my nice little portable keyboard and mouse here, and I could go on Firefox and I could download some games. I could launch Steam and I could play Counter-Strike if I wanted to. This again is the reason why I call it the ultimate console. This does everything. Right now I'm not connected to the internet, I have my Wi-Fi disconnected, but essentially yes, you could launch Steam, you could launch Epic Games and play Fortnite. Again, there's so many advantages to it. The only real disadvantage to the PC system is, I'm not gonna say the word difficulty, but it is not super user friendly. Again, if you're the type of person that wants it to be in an Airbnb and a random stranger to walk up to it and play, this is not it. This setup is for you personally, somebody that is a gamer that's gonna enjoy this for years and years and years and years. If you are looking for something where, hey Vic, I love Time Crisis, I want my customers to enjoy it and put money in and put court, no, it, no, this is not, this is not for that. So that's honestly really the only disadvantage that I can think of as far as a PC based, whether you're doing Hyperspin, whether you're doing LaunchBot, BigBot, 
No matter what, it's the same idea, the same principle. There is a learning curve to it. There is a thing where I have people that go, hey Vic, like, I wanna play Mario Kart. I'm like, okay, which one? Oh, what do you mean which one? I wanna play Mario Kart. Yeah, but there's Mario Kart on the Wii, there's Mario Kart on the GameCube, there's Mario Kart on the N64, there's Mario Kart on the, on the Super NES. And you know, a lot of times that does happen where like, Vic, I just wanna play Mario Kart. I'm like, mm, which one? There's a lot of variations to it. So there is, again, it does take some getting used to, figuring out what system you wanna play, what game you wanna play, not to mention when it loads and it exits, you gotta let it do its thing. You have to have the patience for it. Again, I meet people and I've actually physically seen, I, I fix people's drives and I've gone to people's houses that they purchase arcades, not from me, but from someone else and shit hits the fan and it doesn't work. And I've seen people, you know, they launch it, they press it, they go, Vic, but what has happened? That is where a lot of people go like, this isn't for me. This is just, I wanted something very simple and it could be simple it's just again you need you need the patience for it you got to learn the system if you're not into that and you want something that's super easy plug and play this is not really for you i would suggest a pandora's box and now again as you can see though and i do this on purpose when i show people my videos and all that as you can see right now i just try to exit vic it didn't exit i didn't hold the button long enough again it is something that you have to learn and get used to it's you, you need the patience for it. If you're the type of person that expects this to work out of the box and you, it should be like, Vic, I should press this button and it should work and it didn't. I personally, my setups are sped up specifically so that you have to do long button presses. This way you don't accidentally hit it. Especially when it comes to like exiting, you know, you don't want to accidentally hit exit because you meant to put coin in. That's how I have this set up. So if you are willing to, you know, relax and figure out, understand how the system is and you have the patience for it, then yes, a PC-based system is for you. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Again, many people that I meet, they go, Vic, it, it, does, it doesn't work. I got this guy's drive, it doesn't work. Most of the time, yes, I'll, I'll team viewer in and I'll help you and then I'll see that whoever was the creator just copy and paste it and didn't really test. My systems aren't like that. I test everything and, and everything. I just have to test it. That is a big thing. This is going to Canada. You know, I don't want this customer to get this and go, hey Vic, it didn't launch, I test everything. Will this customer have a flawless experience? He could if he understands like, hey, I have to long press this to enter and I have to long press this to exit. Basically, once I give him the tutorial on it, you'll get it. And I always do that for all my customers. I'll make the specific tutorial for you. Again, I don't want to say he's going to have a flawless experience because I know for a fact he's going to forget to put in the dongle for the NES before he starts an NES game and then he's going to go, Vic, this controller doesn't work. I'm going to basically say, listen, exit, be sure it's in, then restart. Again, you just have to learn the system. That's I say it repetitively, but it's something you got to learn. All right, so now we're going to actually just do a quick little gameplay before my camera overheats. We're going to do like NFL Blitz that somebody wanted. I also want to show you I don't want to do any cuts in this part. I just want to show you how the system runs. So my main arcade, I have three separate wheels, main ROMs, all ROMs, and then four player, along with like arcade shmups, trackball, and driving games. But basically, I'm going to go into four player, and we're going to look for NFL Blitz. Cool, we'll launch to Gold Edition, NFL Blitz 2K, sure. and we'll play. Loading. Four player games right here, for example, this is mapped out from player one, two, three, and four. Normally it's one, two, three, four, but in this specific game for main four player, it's one, two, three, four, like it should. As you can see right now, Vic, what, uh, what's happening? It's doing its boot. That's how the real arcade cabinet would boot. And now we can just enter some coins and I'll do a four player game. Why not? I'll put a bunch of coins in. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Awesome. Awesome. We won't do any entering the names. We'll just pick a team. We'll do Arizona. Why not? Player three picks that and player three and one percent. Awesome. Again, just some quick gameplay. This right now, people are requesting this because A1UP released their cabinet of this and we'll play it, why not? And yes, this does have late hits. That's what the A1UP is missing, but put some volume up, why not? So player three, we're gonna have to just enter everybody here and go. Got that boost. Oh, good hop, there you go. Cool, awesome, nice. And again, late hits as you can see. Awesome. We'll do a quick pass. Why not? Again, you just got to figure out who's who. 
meaning who gets the ball. So one, one, and three. Awesome. Here we go. Awesome. The throw. Awesome. Late hits. There's your late hit. <laughs> we'll do one more throw, why not? I intercepted. Awesome. Cool. As you can see, NFL Blitz with the late hits as always. I exited it out. We'll bring it back. Another very popular one is, like I said, the Marvel vs. Capcom 2. That's in Naomi. That's not even a MAME arcade game. When we say MAME arcade, that means MAME emulator. This is running the Demule uh, emulator for this. So, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is one of the few games that I personally launch, and there's actually a code you enter to get all the characters. It's an unlocked thing. There's actually a level thing. Uh, Mame Arcade has like Simpsons Bowling. You have to launch that for the first time. You have to do a button press for it to go. So I get, again like this, I launch these games and I test them to make sure. So right now we're gonna run Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and you can see level 84. If you have an arcade cabinet, you take a look and let me know if you're on level 84. We have all the characters unlocked. And yes, I could bring in player two. And again, this is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is the arcade emulator. This is the real arcade version. If I didn't have any money in, it would give you the attract mode. And obviously, as you saw, it had already seven credits in it. But yes, this is the arcade version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Beautiful stuff. Awesome. Let me bring in some cable. This is like gun and everything, and awesome. Who doesn't love Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Easy, peasy. Long press to exit, and then we're back. Awesome, I can bring it back. Um, I'm gonna actually try real quick. I just have to get the dongle. We will get a NES game launch. So let me just grab the dongle from back here. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not gonna lie to you, there is a lot of dongles going on here. And again, there's each dongle has a specific controller. So. I now have my dongle in hand. Before I even launch the game, I'm gonna plug my dongle in. I have control with the arcade stick still. We'll do NES. And, uh, I don't know. We'll play, uh, I wanna play a game that I know. Uh, we'll do, why not, we'll do this. So long press. Again, the dongle is in, so it's already connected. You just have to press the power button. In this specific controller, the dongle being in is the big deal, that already connects it. Uh, but basically now, after the loading screen and all that, we should be able to play using this controller. Again, this emulator here is only mapped out to this controller. It doesn't work with the arcade sticks. You must use this controller here. And depending on the game, as you can see, we have to kind of just wait for this introduction to go and I'm able to play. Awesome. See, like that, you have to wait for the appropriate time for it to work. You just, like, somebody might be like, hey, Vic, it's not working. Yes, you just have to wait for the correct time. And yes, and as you can see, I'm able to go left, I'm able to go right, awesome, awesome, cool. Still with the RK6, I'm able to exit out and then the game will exit. There you go, awesome, see that? Sweet, now I wanna play a gun game, cool, fine. We're gonna get our jolt. Again, doing this on purpose, I don't wanna do any cuts. Just so you can just kinda see the system as it goes about. Don't worry, it'll be nice and neater. This, these guns are actually gonna go behind the TV mount. I'm gonna do that before it goes out. Um, but right now I'm gonna take my gun. Awesome. Again, as you can see, I'm putting my devices in before launching the game. I could go to the wheel. I could go in this wheel and then put the controller in, that's fine. But the big thing is you wanna make sure that you put the device in before you start the game. We'll run some Carnival, why not? Carnival. I actually got into an argument with someone because they thought that this game could be run on the Wii and it can't. Um, so again, main emulation. Vic, what happened? It's doing its boot. You gotta let it do its thing, especially when it's a main arcade game. As you can see, it'll do its thing. This game specifically, I have everything again, like I said, mapped to the actual gun itself. And the coin is on it and the start is on it. Vic, what's happening? You just gotta wait, that's all it is. And so the coin, I'm gonna start. Pick our mode. Some of the games utilize the off-screen reload, some don't. You have the rear button in the back to do the reload. So depending on the game, as you saw like Area 51, I do have the off-screen reload. 
This game, I don't believe, does. It doesn't. Again, this is a game that you can't hold down the button. You have to press the trigger to shoot. Awesome. That's it. I'm done playing. I could even pause. I could go to the bathroom if I wanted to. We'll unpause. I'll load up on this guy. I'll exit out. And now I'm back into the front end. I'm done playing with my gun games. I'll put the gun back. And that's it. As you can see right now, we just launched MAME. We launched Naomi. I launched an NES game. I launched a gun game. Still utilizing the controls. I still have control of the front end. Nothing has happened. If I wanted to play, let's keep going. If I want to play now a PC game, I want to play, uh, I don't know, I, I want to do Grand Theft Auto again. <laughs> uh, we could do anything like that. That's, this is like the advantage. This is what I want to show people that this is what I do. This is, this is it. Again, still utilizing the arcade stick to select my game. I'm able to go about and then pick a game. Uh, let's see, some of the games do need a keyboard and mouse, such as Roller Coaster Tycoon. Amazing game growing up. But yeah, some of them do need a keyboard and mouse. I don't know. Uh, Stray is a new one with this cat. <laughs> Long press. Again, I have my Xbox controller on. PC games are different. You could actually launch it without the controller on, but just follow the trend of using the controller to be on. And as you can see, I'm able to play it. I don't really have to play it, but my thing is I just want you to see everything. Again, PC games, I have to actually quit in the game. There is no exit on it. I have to actually quit. And again, once it quits, just give it a second. I'm waiting for this to basically reconnect and get um, focus of the front end. And there you go. Not all of them do that. Some of the PC games are still exiting in the background. And yes, I'm able to go about and play. I want to play some Sonic Mania. This is a PC game in it. Also with this, if you notice it, this has custom loading screens for the cabinet. I do all that. I'm just a custom type of guy. I'm gonna end this video now with shutting down process of it. But again, as you can see, we just launched like four different emulators and games and it's working. Again, something that you have to learn, pick up, get used to. It's not bad. You just gotta have the patience for it. That's all it is. And awesome, Sonic Mania, it's got, I don't wanna get hit with any uh, copyright infringement sound. This one, is actually could be used with the arcade sticks as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not gonna use the arcade stick, but you could use the arcade sticks. This is one of those games that I have it set. But, exit out, and yes, awesome, sweet. Now the big thing again, you just gotta let it do its thing, the PC game will exit. I have focus, cool. We're gonna shut down the system. Again, it is a PC, you must shut it down. We're gonna exit, I'm on the desktop. I come here, I have a button here to shut down the system. We're gonna wait until this totally shuts down. Even after it shuts down, give it about 30 seconds, and then we could pull the plug on the rear. This cabinet, for example, the LEDs could stay on. The LEDs on the control panel do stay on, but also like your monitor stays on. It'll go off after like 10 minutes. But normally me personally, like my builds, I always unplug everything. As you can see right now, the TV's gonna go into store mode. It'll just go into an attract mode. I always turn off my TV. We don't have to worry about the PC monitor, more about the TV. I let that power down. You don't really wanna unplug it while it's on. And that's it. Now I'm able to come here, flip the switch, and I can have a good night. That's it. Now real quick for video purposes, I'll just restart this uh, setup. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna start it so you can see how it can start up. Basically, we just wanna make sure that both of these screens turn on and they're fully on before putting on the PC. I have my TV set to store mode, so as you can see, it is on. I'm gonna wait until it gets out of this kind of intro screen. And then I'm gonna put on the PC. So I'm just gonna wait for it and I'll put it on now. Awesome, again, you don't hear a beep. One button press on that PC, I could hear the fan spinning up and we're just gonna let the computer do its thing. This customer specifically wanted Hyperspin to start on its own. I have that set up where after 30 seconds, it will start up on its own. He wanted that. My builds personally, I don't have Hyperspin set to start up automatically because I use my PC for more than just an arcade cabinet. Again, I use it for Steam, I play Counter-Strike. I use my PC for that. So instead of me always turning on my PC, now I gotta wait for Hyperspin, now I gotta exit it. 
this customer wanted that, you have the option. Again, this customer does have the two screens, so that's why it's very important to wait for the screens to turn on, because if I turn on the PC before this screen, it's gonna think this is display one, whereas this is display one. So a lot of stuff going on, I hit my TV. <laughs> Uh, Canada has his own TV. This is my TV. It's not going to Canada. He has his own TV. He didn't need me to supply it. So again, I have this set to start 30 seconds after log on. That is on purpose. There is programs in the background that need to launch, such as, for example, the servos have a program. There's a program called background gaming, and now we are able to game. As you can see, I didn't press anything. Once I see the screen, I'm in and I'm able to game. That is honestly it, guys. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It That is a PC-based system. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm VP Game Case Arcades. I am a one-man army. I'm proud to say that. What you see right here is what I did. Nobody helps me. I do it all. Thank you for watching. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, you can always message me, email me. I will always answer. Woo! Project Canada, man. What a beast of a system. Amazing.